Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. Hey, thank you so much for joining us here on our YouTube channel for episode number 971. Well, today we're going to talk tech, and we're going to talk about even a bigger theme than that, and that is when you love agriculture, when you when you like the lifestyle, you like everything that goes with it, but your aptitude kind of takes you in a different direction. How do you go about combining those two things and bringing them back together? Well, in this episode, we're going to be speaking with a young man from Taylorsville High School FFA in Illinois. His name is Toby Wynans, and he's going to be talking to us all about how he combined his love of tech with farming and how that led to his own drone business. It's very, very interesting, and we're going to get that started for you right now. Toby, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on today. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. Hey, it's my pleasure. I am looking forward to the conversation, and uh, everyone's going to hear this a ways after Christmas, but uh, we're just a couple days away, so Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you as well. All right. Well, uh, let's just jump right in. Let's learn a little bit about Toby. So where are you talking to us from? Where do you live? I'm actually uh, in my house in Blue Mound. Um, Illinois. Um, I go to school at Taylorville, but uh, I'm just right on the edge to where I get to luckily go to Taylorville High School. Oh, okay. So you, uh, if you were lived a little bit further in one direction, you'd be in a different school district? Just uh, if my mailbox on the other side of the road, I'd be going to Meridian. Oh, no kidding. Okay. And you prefer Taylorville? Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Taylor's the best. Okay. Well, that's great. I'm glad you feel that way. Well, so do you live out on a farm, or are you in a town, or maybe like a small acreage in between, or something like that? I'm out in the country um, quite a ways. Um, it's not a big farm, but uh, it's it's a little nice little farm, I guess you you could say. Okay, and is that is that being farmed, or are you and your parents doing something on it? Is it leased out or something, or or what goes on there? Where I live. Um, we don't have farm, but, uh, my grandparents, mm -hmm. um, have farmland, um, that's around here. So this area is kind of like our farm. <laughs> okay. I, I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Very good. Now, how long have you been part of the FFA? For four years now. Okay. And so I'm assuming, uh, you obviously, you're a senior now, so you started that your freshman year? Yes. Yep. Greenhand. Okay. Very good. Well, what brought you in? Why did you want to join? Well, uh, my father was really involved in his FFA chapter uh, way back in the day. And uh, I, I always wanted to do what he did because I looked up to my dad. Okay. And uh, he, he advised me to look into my FFA chapter. And uh, I did. I looked into the tail of FFA chapter. And uh, I saw it was a, a great operation. and. Uh, I decided to join it, and uh, I don't regret anything. That's good. Well, good. I'm glad. And so uh, your dad kind of set that family legacy for you. Yes, he did. Okay, very good. Well, I mean, you've had quite a run. I mean, here you are, your senior, but I've been looking at uh, kind of, I guess, your stats, if you will. Uh, so you're currently your vice president of your chapter. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And then also the chapter technology director. Yes, I am. Okay. So now that's a new title. That's one I've never run across before. What do you do as the chapter technology director? Oh, I've I've done a lot of things as the, the technology guy, I, I'm called. I, uh, I go to using the printer to uh, fixing computers for my ag teachers. Okay. I mean, there's there's really no end to this job. It's, uh, <laughs> it's quite a fun one, and uh, I'm, I'm glad I have it. Okay. Is this something that came about because of coronavirus, or did you guys have this position before all of that? Actually, um, I, as a freshman, um, I would like fix small things. Uh, Schaefer would yell at me. My Schaefer is my ag teacher. <laughs> okay. She'd tell me to come up and fix the printer or make sure her projector is working correctly. And I'd go up there and fix it. And she'd always have a spot for me uh, as the, the vice president and uh, technology guy. So then was this technology position created specifically for you? It was. Um, I guess the, the second technology person she has, and uh, 
Um, she's always coming up with different ways to make me the vice president of technology or, or whatnot. So it was uh, created for me. Oh, I see. So you've got, you've got multiple vice president positions in your chapter. You're vice president and of technology. Is that correct? Am I understanding that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We have such a big chapter. Uh, it, it, it's nice to have uh, multiple vice presidents. Okay. How big is your chapter? Oh man, I think we're the second largest FFA chapter in the state. Oh, um, yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, I'm proud of that. Well, man, I mean, when you take that into account, um, well, I know there, there's a really large ag school in Chicago, uh, the Chicago High School of Ag Sciences. They've got a huge chapter, so you're second to them. Yes. Yep. Uh-huh. They're they're first because uh, everyone in their school is in the FFA. Yeah. So. That's why we're, we're just second. Wow, that is really interesting. That is a big chapter. How many advisors do you have? We have three advisors. Okay. All right. Uh, would you mind? I know you mentioned Mrs. Schaefer, and, and I like to say thanks to her as well. Uh, she's helped me out a ton with setting up interviews and some other students from Taylorville. Uh, who are your other advisors there as well? We got uh, Katie King. Um, she's my Ag Mac teacher. Um, she's always out in the shop fixing things and uh we got Lori parks um she's another one of my ag teachers and she's in the ag science kind of stuff awesome well thank you so much for for acknowledging them i want to talk about this tech side of you because i i know this is going to relate and come over to your supervised agricultural experience but you said even as a freshman mrs schaefer was having you fix stuff and work on computers so where does this aptitude for working in tech and working on computers come from Oh, it definitely comes from my my parents, my grandparents. Um, way back when, when uh, the technology was first being introduced, uh, my father and grandfather was, were, were always on the front of these things. They were making websites before they were popular. Um, they were pretty. They were good at that too, and uh, they were always the first to, to do something like that. Which I thought, well, thinking now is really cool. Um, mm-hmm. so as a kid, I was just introduced to this stuff and, uh, I just grown to it and, uh, I love doing this kind of stuff. That's interesting. So your dad and your grandfather, were they like running a business together? Were they doing this together as a hobby or how did that all look? It, it kind of was a little bit of a hobby and a little bit of a work kind of thing. And, uh, they don't do it anymore, but, uh, my dad and I, um, we do audio visual for, mm-hmm. um, different events too. Mm-hmm. So we still carry on this kind of legacy, okay. if you will. Yeah, that's great. So, th- so we know how you, how you learned about it, how you developed this aptitude. Now, how did Mrs. Schaefer figure this out when you were a freshman that you, she could tap you on the so- shoulder and you could fix these tech problems for? Her? Well, she knew the Winans and, uh, Sadly, she knew my dad, so dad's always trying to get me involved in this stuff as a freshman, obviously. Okay. And uh, he goes, yeah, just, just get him on to doing something. So I worked on the computer and okay. uh, never stopped. Okay, very interesting. So sadly, she knew your dad. <laughs> That's got to be an inside yeah. joke, I, I would assume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I, you know, I'd have you explain it, but maybe I won't. Maybe we'll just skip right on past <laughs> that. That's pretty funny. Okay, so your dad kind of said, hey, he's got the skills, he can do this for you, and uh, you've been doing that ever since. So that's very interesting. Now, your your supervised ag experience obviously relates to tech. Tell everybody what you've been doing. Well, um, I've been uh, using drones to scout fields in order to benefit the field and the farmer. Okay. Now, did this come from... So I'm, I want to know the origin of this. Is this because you have this deep desire or just love row crop farming? Or is this because you like ag and you like tech and you went, wow, here's a really cool tech item that I can use to work in ag or maybe a combination of the two? Well, absolutely. Um, actually, it, it started with uh, my grandpa, my dad, and I. Um, we, we saw that drones were being used for agricultural use. And at the time, that was that was mind blowing. We didn't know that was, a, that was a thing. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, started messing around with it. We, uh, we purchased a drone. Um, we, we saw and researched how it could help, 
uh, do drone or uh, scout fields and stuff. Okay. And uh, Dad actually got a job at a grant um, doing this stuff. Okay. So um, it, it worked out for us. Um, so he, he got a better drone, and then I got the, the drone we purchased. And okay. uh, I, I started scouting the field with it, um, doing small things mm-hmm. like on our farm. And uh, I got some customers that were looking into the small things I was doing. And uh, now I stay out their fields and okay. uh, help them with their operations. Okay. okay, Toby. So this is a really interesting business. How did you go about finding customers to do this for? Well, uh, Dad, um, he, there's a Brant facility in Mount Auburn, which is not far from where I live. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I kind of know the people around me, um, people in my community. and. Uh, they saw the, the drone, uh, what I was doing and whatnot, and uh, they wanted me to do it on their, their field. So um, they were customers of Brandt, and uh, my dad, talking to them, um, suggested me to fly their field, because um, at the time I wasn't doing much as a project. Mm-hmm. So uh, he offered me uh, the, the customers. At the time, it was only three, mm-hmm. um, which they limited the amount of acres because they didn't know what I was capable of. Sure. And, uh, I flew their field that, that year, that season. And, uh, they really liked what, what they got out of it. And, uh, after time they gave me all their acres and all their fields. Very cool. So when it's, when you're doing crop scouting with a drone, uh, are you looking at it in real time and making assessments or are you giving them the video and using all the different, cameras and imaging software and things like that so they can assess it after the fact well i use a software called drone deploy and uh, with drone deploy all i have to do is prep the drone i have to make sure everything's safe um i have to go over a few rules uh, look around um make sure of my surroundings Mm -hmm. and then uh, the app will take it away from there um i will uh plant the mission um i will uh tell the drone where to go and where it needs to go. And then the app will program it um, however I need it to. And uh, it will run the drone itself. Okay. Um, it tells the drone every so many acres um, to take a picture. And uh, with, the, with the pictures, um, it'll run it through an algorithm uh, to measure the biomass of the crop. And then it'll sew up all of the the pictures into a map Mm -hmm. and uh i'll give the map to the customer and uh they can give it to an agronomist um for the agronomist to read got it okay so you're putting together all the raw data well actually more than raw data because you've got the software but you're putting that together in a package and then they've got another person that can look at it assess it and come up with strategies to help you know help them through the rest of the growing season and figure out if they've got problems, how to address them, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Now, uh, how long have you been doing this independently? Is this your first, yeah, like, was this last growing season your first time or have you been doing this a couple of years? Um, I actually been doing it for, I guess about four years. Um, the first year, my freshman year, I, I kind of needed a push. So dad assisted me in some mm-hmm. flights and mm-hmm. I would do some of my own. Um, Brant, um, they helped me pay for the the yearly fee of drone deploy, which is uh, five hundred dollars. Okay. Got it. So um, after a while, since I was kind of on my own um, after the freshman year, after I got the hang of it, um, I I took the price of of the the software mm-hmm. and then uh, I did it myself. Okay. And is there a is there a business name for your particular drone business at this point? Not really. Um, I, I had a few names thrown around, but uh, uh, all my customers, I, I have a, a close bond with them. So they, okay. just, they just call me by my first name and uh, they, they spread the word of, of how Toby does this with the drone okay. and my drone service. Uh, it's just, uh, just my, my first name basis. Okay, so we're in the stage of uh, I need somebody to scout my fields for me with the drone and people say call Toby. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Very good. Well, so here you are. Uh, You're halfway through your senior year of high school, and uh, you've got this business going. Uh, You're obviously very tech-oriented. You like agriculture. So how how has all this has kind of come together in high school through the FFA, through working with your dad, all of that? How is that all going to manifest itself when you're done with high school? What's next for you? Oh, I'm I'm hoping this this really comes out because um, uh, I'm going to I'm planning on going to Lakeland um, mm-hmm. to further my education in the ag tech world. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm assuming this is going to go hand in hand with everything I'm wanting to learn um, for the next four years. Okay, so Lakeland Community College, right? Yes. Okay. That's a college. I've heard that name a lot doing this show, so I'm becoming, becoming more and more familiar with that school. Man, a lot of really talented ag students that I'm interviewing in the FFA are going there, so that, that sounds to me like a great destination, a great place to get your start. They do have a, they have a great um, ag program that I'm really looking forward to. Okay. So now, do you do you know what you want to study while you're there? Will you declare a major? Are you going to go all the way through to a bachelor's degree, get an associate's, a certificate? Uh, do you have a plan on that quite yet? I don't have a plan yet. Um, I'm really wanting to just get in the basics right now. Um, I don't want to make a, a big plan yet, uh-huh. but uh, I just want to experiment with the, the different kinds of technology okay. that that the ag program can uh, give me. Okay. And as you look forward into the future, are you, do you, do you like being your own boss? Is that something that interests you or would you like to uh, go to work for a company at some point that would allow you to work with, with some of this more sophisticated tech? I am wanting to work um, with a company. Um, I think I work better with a team and uh, with an ag business team or an ag technology team. I do believe I can learn more and um, benefit more yeah, from, a, from a team basis instead of working for myself. Very good. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah. That's a really wise thing to say. I work on my own, um, you know, and I've been doing that for several years and I enjoy that. But the flip side of that is uh, to collaborate and to speak with people who are in my industry and understand my industry. I miss out on some of that. And so I've got to get creative to be able to do that. So you're making a very, very good point about working on a team like that. I, I want to ask your advice as we kind of wrap up today's episode. You know, you, you've got this, this passion, this love, I guess, uh, and you've grown up around agriculture, uh, but you're very tech oriented and you found a way to combine the two. And there's going to be other students that come into the FFA after you whether it's your chapter or some other chapter who's listening to this interview. And there's going to be students that have, they've got a passion, they're fired up about something they also like, ag, and they're going to try and figure out a way to mesh the two things together. What would you tell that student if they reached out to you and said, how did you, how did you figure out to make these two things work together? Well, I would say speak to your advisor, the basics, never give up, um, keep trying. Um, with technology, it never works out the first go. <laughs> never. Even if you, you turn the power button on and off, it, it's, you're just going to have to try, try, try again. And that's what I did. And uh, as a senior, I don't regret anything. Um, I just tried again. Um, do your research. Um, I've done a lot of Google searches on mm. how to fix printer. Got to do all of it. Just put in time, put in the work, and uh, it'll pay off. Very good. Well, Toby, that is a very, very interesting thing you're doing. I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes in the future. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. No problem. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being here, everybody. And thank you to Toby Winans for coming on the Off Farm Income Podcast today and sharing that great information with us. And hey, we really do appreciate you being here. Please click that subscribe button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you'd like to connect with us elsewhere, well, we're out there on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn as well. We would love to connect with you at all of those places, everybody. And hey, as always... Enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business, agriculture.